What's up, everybody? Really appreciate you all for tuning in. My name is Law Nation, L-A-W Nation. <laughs> Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, share this content. Uh, I, I want to say this. My thoughts on Tack McKinley. He have uh, off the top of my head about 16 to 17 sacks uh, between his career since he was drafted by the Atlanta Falcons. One can argue and say, well, he was high on our draft boards or what have you. And I think that they scooped right on in right before us and picked him up, right? Now, he's been averaging, what, anywhere, if you break that down, anywhere from probably four to maybe six sacks uh, a year. And this year alone, he had only one sack, right? But uh, it's not about the stats with him. It's, it's more so, can he fit well within your system? And where will you place him if he so happened to be picked up for the Cowboys or what have you? I don't think that we have a defensive edge problem. Let me repeat. I don't think that we have a defensive edge problem. Let me say it louder. I don't think that we have a defensive edge problem. I think we had an issue with the interior. I, I would be thinking about, hey, how can we improve our interior? Now, we do see Gallimore. Mm-hmm. We see him stepping it up and, and shooting through the gaps or what have you, using his physical power. He's he kind of like blocky and short, and he could just move things out of the way. We like that. But the room is so crowded on the outside that I don't see where we can utilize Tech McKinley. Now, expectations when they meet reality, you can say to yourself, well, maybe he can rush the passer better than what we have on that side as it relates to D-Law. But that's not the reality there. Mm -mm. D-Law is one hell of a guy that can really stop the run. He, he's always going to be on top of that. And, and we could talk back and forth about the passing situation as it relates to that. But as far as D-Law rushing the, the, the runner, if you can say that, run, support, He's fantastic. And setting the edge, you really don't have any issues or, or, or warts or worries about that with D-Law. Even if we go back to the massacre when we got all but handed to us, right? Everything was broken down in that playoff game in 2000 and I believe 18. Was it 18 year? May have been so long ago. But when we played against the Rams and all we looked up and we saw was Gurley and, and company and C.J. Anderson running. It was so bad. That if you when you look at the film, they didn't figure it out to kick D Law to the opposite side. <laughs> they actually kicked D Law to the opposite side to say, "Hey, can you just stop the bleeding on that side of the field?" And and we kind of slowed down the running, but it was too late. It was too late at that point. Um, so my thoughts is is this right here? If you want to bring a man for a cup of coffee, then so be it. Bring him in for that good old cup of coffee. He's only uh, owed $800,000 left on his rookie's contract. I think you can eat that or you can match that or what have you, whatever the rules and regulations are with that. Bring him in, work him out, see what he can do, but know with the mindset that this is more so of an insurance policy. It's more so of a rotational situation on that side. I think that he will bring in a little bit better situation than what we got out of a Dorrance Armstrong. Dorrance Armstrong is similar, but Dorrance Armstrong get there, but he don't all the way get there, if that makes any sense. So Tack McKinley, Dorrance Armstrong, give me Tack McKinley, you know. So that's that should be the angle where the Cowboys should go with. Now, Rondell Carter is out there. He's been released from the Colts. I, I put a poll out there on my Instagram. I was trying to get a vibe or a feel. I think I also put it out there on the Facebook groove. I don't know. I don't know what the Cowboy is going to do. But in my world, I want to see Bradley and I. I want to see if he can play on that side. And, of course, I want to see what we can work out with our younger guys. Nevertheless, Let's pull the trigger on Tack McKinley. It's not that much money. And you can say to yourself, hey, this can be a project. This is a guy with a first round grade to many. He just didn't pan out right in Atlanta land. 
Let's scoop up somebody. You know that's right up the alley anyway, right? Look, we've been shopping at the flea market and Walmart, Fred's, Dollar General, Dollar Tree for all of this time. Why not go and shake the tree over there and say, okay, let's see what this guy can do. You ever went through one of those refurbished lines and you see something and you say, okay, I can still work with this one. Hopefully they will have that mindset. In other news, in other news. Uh oh, before I go to the other news, I want to know how you all feel about that. Are you all in favor of kicking the can? Trying to set this thing out with Tack McKinley. Post that down in the comment box. And on the other situation, Marquette King, they said they like his workout. They love what he was able to display and exhibit and it exude. Hmm? Thank you for tuning in to the Law Nation Film Session, right? I need to do one of those on Marquette King. Uh, they said they like him. So we would know the news after the break, I believe, after this by by we we would know what will the Cowboys do ultimately with Marquette King. They they said now this is for all lip services of course. Um when I was out there quick story time <laughs> when I was out there trying to be a door to door salesman, trying to sell things, right? The manager would say, Hey, it's cool and all that you got this forecast, you got this budget and you got this going on, but is the ink on paper yet? Meaning that, do you have the ink? Do you have the contract done? Do they have the signature? We can't move. Everything else you're talking about is irrelevant. Do you have the ink on paper? So that is what I'm saying with Marquette King. Do you have the ink on paper? Because you can always hear all of the stuff that they're talking about forecasting and budgeting. But will we see the ink on paper? And what do you guys want? Because Chris Jones is out for the remainder of the year. It's crazy. Diggs is out. Dak is out. This this year, uh, Jarwin is out. Man, this this year is just crazy. Like I said in my previous videos, 2020 is a cuss word now. 2020, you you know, you can literally say that and they probably block. You know, like next year and down the line, you know, you start saying 2020, you <laughs> they gonna be like, man, dog, man, we gonna throw these hands, fam. You know, it was the year that Kobe went away, right? The guy from Jeopardy, you know, a whole list of people. Black Panther, you know, this is a crazy year, man. Flat out crazy. I just want to see it all the way through, though, right? We want to survive through this year. Uh, I was reading an excerpt, and shout out to Miss Jackie. You know, Miss Jackie always said to me, great, 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 wonderful information throughout the day. And I'm talking about I don't really need ESPN news or I don't need Yahoo news or or uh, any of those other news tickers because she sends me this information like mm, right before it released. And I said, man, it's not even released yet. And Miss Jackie just sends it out to me. And I'd be like, wow, I read it and I tell her, you know, thank you so much. She's really the best at this. You know, she really is. Um, the news was and the article was talking about. Dak Prescott, Rain Dakota Prescott. But before I talk about what Roger Starbuck and as well as with uh, Troy Aikman had to say, let's talk about Colin Cowherd. Yesterday, I didn't get a chance to listen to Colin Cowherd, but shout out to Brianna Betty. She hit me up too. And she, she sent this information over to me saying, hey, Colin Cowherd said that Hubert... And as well as what's the what's the guy Joe Burrows is way better than Dak Prescott. Now I do know that people would like to hate on Dak Prescott because you know of obvious reasons because he was drafted in the fourth round. We talk about the win loss ratio of last year and of course a piece of it this year. But to sit here and say yeah Hubert and uh, Burrows is better than Dak Prescott at this present day, come on, that's reaching, man. That's that's a lot of reaching. Dak Prescott, and I'm not trying to be an apologist, but let's call a spade a spade. Dak Prescott is damn near good over here, you know? Yeah, I mean, he really, you can just see how everybody reacts to Dak Prescott and the intangibles, the things that you just can't measure, the heart, the soul of the team, right? I digress. But we're going to head over to 2021. 
and we will see how everything is going to rock out for this year or for that year. All right, so back to what Troy Aikman and uh, Roger Starback said about Dak Prescott. They were saying that the Joneses, they need to sign him. They love Dak Prescott. These are the icons of the Dallas Cowboys. Roger Starback, Troy Aikman. One can argue that we would probably have no Super Bowls if those two never put on the silver and blue. But we know that those convinced against their will is of the same opinion still. And I'm not out here to try to change anybody's mind, set, anybody's thoughts, or anybody's compassions and all of these things. It is what it is. You know, it flat out is what it is. I would believe the Joneses after draft day, right? <laughs> after the ink is on paper. It's going all the way back to what I said earlier. Do you have the ink on paper? Now, we can hear lip services all the time. And you guys know I don't want to put up the pig, but you know, it's just like putting lipstick on a pig. Or just like some wet on my back, man. Where does wet come from? Oh, it's just rain. Nah, dog, why the rain is yellow, you know? <laughs> We do not want to be suckered into a situation. Nevertheless, this season, if we can just completely get rid of this season and head into 2021, then we'll find out from here. All right, Cowboy Nation, that's all the time that I'm going to steal from you all. I promise you, uh, I, I really appreciate you all for watching and tuning in and sharing and uh, sharing is caring. Happy Veterans Day to all of the veterans out there. Shout out to Pops, man. He the reason why I'm here, right? <laughs> he the reason why I, I try to be the, the well-rounded guy that I am. Shout out to Pops, man. You know I love you. And shout out to all of the veterans out there. Those who follow the channel, that if you are a veteran, uh, just put in the chat box V or Vet, you know, and, and I'll try to you know show you my love and adulations and give you a shout out on the next video or so. Uh, let's continue to grind the shine, Cowboy Nation. Uh, let me know again how you guys feel of Tack McKinley. And it sounds so right, right? You have Dak on one side of the offensive side of the ball, and you have Tack on the defensive side of the ball, right? Right? Tack. You know, Dak attack, then you have Tack attack, if you can say that, right? <laughs> but when you look at the film and everything, just don't look at the the aspect of, hey, it was Atlanta. Just look at the aspect of how he can improve the Dallas Cowboys as a rotational piece. You get better at your best. He will be slightly better than a Doris Armstrong at minimum, right? All right, Cowboy Nation. That's been my time. I really thank you all for yours. And remember, you're listening to nothing but the bass. Let's go. Let's go, Cowboy Nation. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go.